Hey everyone, all right, it's Sam. Welcome to part three of our 124th Hasegawa Ferrari 250TR video build. Yes, we are back for the third and final part of this build. We're going to start off where we left off last time. I think we're going straight into bodywork polishing on this, and we're going to get that beautiful Le Mans blue 2K finish to a beautiful high shine. It already looks fantastic, and flattening it back and polishing it is just going to make it look even better. So let's jump straight in, let's get cracking, and let's get this wonderful kit finished. Okay, so this is where we left off last time. Our 2K body has been dry now for eight days. It is well and truly dry. Usually cured after five days of Pro Scale 2K and ready for some flattening back. So we've got some fresh water, a little bit of dishwashing liquid. This is Aldi's finest. A little dribble in there. Don't normally do this. I always mean to. I never have any in the cave. And I remember for once on my girlfriend Hannah put them in a bottle for me for future use. Mix it up to get a little bit of froth. And we've got our Trizic 3000, 6000, 8000 pads. And we're going to go round and gently flat all the body. Now, the 2K is phenomenal. It's lovely and flat. We have got minimal dust and dirt in the 2K. So we don't need to go too mad. So we're just going to lightly go over with all three grits and take it back. The reasons for doing this is, number one, we'll get rid of any annoying dust spots that are in there. We can deal with those. And we're just going to flatten back the 2K. It'll make it look thinner. It'll make it look a lot more realistic. And this preparation now will make it shine like an absolute diamond. It already is shining. You could literally leave this as is if you wanted, but I know we can get it better. Um, so flatten it back, give it a polish up to the UMP polish system, and it'll look even better in the long run. So that is what we're going to do. So nice, simple job. Takes, what, an hour of your day, if that? All you got to do is be careful of any corners, any raised areas, anything that sticks up, anything at all, any edges where the paint is always inherently thinner. Because it's so easy to burn through. And just take your time. You don't need a lot of pressure, especially with these 3M pads. They are so efficient. And it's a case of going around the entire body and flatten it back and then go moving on to the next grit. Because using 3,000 first, 6,000 and 8,000, as you go progressively through the grits, the scratches are removed by each subsequent uh, grit of paper and you'll end up with a much better finish. Now, this thing has got so many angles and recesses to it, it's a tricky one to do. We're onto our compound now. This is UMP Compound, Ultimate Modeling Products Polishing System. This is the compound out of the set. Uh, so this is quite an aggressive polish. So this is what will get rid of all the heavy scratches from the sanding process. But like I say, this is a particularly tricky body to polish. There is lots of recesses, lots of raised areas, um, just lots of angles to get. And again, with the compound and the polish, be very, very careful of any raised areas or any corners because the paintwork is always inherently thinner. Because it's on a corner or a raised edge, it's so easy, like wiper jets or bonnet pins, anything like that, it's so easy just to burn through the paint. Trust me, I've been there and done it many times. It's fixable but it's still really annoying. So like I say, this compound is quite an aggressive polish, so that will remove most of our uh, heavier scratches in the sanding. And as you can see, we've got all around the model. We've got a clean piece of cloth now. All t-shirt materials, probably one of your best polishing cloths you can get. Uh, microfiber, I tend to think leaves uh, marks in the paint, personally. So an old t-shirt, freshly washed, Cut up into usable sizes works absolutely perfect. Use no toothbrush to get any dry pieces of compound or polish out. You can see it all of my bench, absolutely terrible. And then with that all cleaned up, we're onto the polish now. So this is like less aggressive polish. And this will get this to a nice, real high shine now. And again, be careful of any recessed areas. You have to be thorough and systematic while also being, you know, mindful of where you're polishing. It is so easy to burn through. I can't stress how easy it is. And it is soul destroying if you take the edge of paint off because there's not much you can do to add it back. And obviously on smaller parts at like the bonnet, we've got lots of edges on this. So just some careful polishing. I'm not applying a lot of pressure at all. It might look like I am, but I'm not. Um, I'm just being careful of everywhere. And obviously with that hump in the middle, we have to be careful of that too. 
So quite an easy system to use, only two parts to it, and the results, well, they speak for themselves. So we've got all that cleaned up, it's all clear of any residue and what have you. The seats, uh, although now fully dry, we can give them a wash. So we've got some dark grey panel line wash from Tamiya, I basically mix black with a bit of the grey to make a nice dark grey. I'm just going to add it to the creases in the seat, let it dry, wipe it off, and it gives a bit of depth to the seat and a little bit of age to the seat as well then. There we go. All around the top. Obviously, you could go a whole heap further than this. If you want to make it look really aged, you could dry brush the seats. You could add damage to them if you really wanted. But for me, this is the look I wanted. So we've got a cotton bud, let it dry, wipe out all the excess. Uh, I tend to find, as I always say, if you leave some for 10 minutes and come back, you'll always see a bit more wash that you've missed. So I would recommend doing that. With the bodywork all ready to go now, we can paint all the inside. So the inside of the cockpit is black. So I opted to paint everything black inside. All the engine bay, the lot. So we've got some Vallejo model color black. It's thinned with a drop or two of water. We've got a nice flat Tamiya brush. Um, and we're going to go around and just paint everything that's inside. Right up that nose cone as well. Because we've got a grill to go in there later. Uh, it's quite nice to get back to brush painting every now and then. Quite cathartic and satisfying in a way. And the Vallejo model colours are absolutely fantastic brush paints to use. They really are. Cover really well. Dry really quick. Clean off the air, uh, brush really easy just with water. So, yeah, fantastic paint. Now, don't worry about getting any paint on the edges. This is just a water-based paint. So when you're done, you can get a cotton bud, moisten it. I definitely didn't lick it. And just gent gently run it over the edge. And it will take any excess paint off, even if it's fully dried. It will literally just wipe off the 2K. So if you see on the edge of that wheel arch, if I just roll the um, cotton bud down there, it'll just take off any excess paint. So we can go around it with nice clean edges everywhere. And of course, don't forget to do your bonnet as well. And again, didn't lick that. Definitely didn't lick that at all. Rumours are untrue. Anyone that says it did, you're a liar. The body's on. We have put it on a little bit prematurely here. We're going to take it back off in a minute. Um... We're going to put the instrument cluster in place, which is quite tricky to do. It needs a delicate little blob of CA glue and some careful holding. The exhaust were on then, you may have noticed. I made a mistake and didn't realise I needed to put a grill in. Completely forgot. So I took the exhaust back off. While they were off, I thought, let's weather them. Because I wasn't going to do it originally, but I am now. So we've got some Alclad sepia effect now. So this is a sepia effect. Um, basically one of their hot metal range, I think it is. Um, we're just going to go to all the edges and the box and any corners, anywhere that would hold more heat than the straight part of the pipe. I'm going to add a little bit of stain into it using the sepia over the engine manifold. And then we're going to come back in with some hot blue and do exactly the same on all those areas. We're not having a, a rainbow on this thing. It's not going to look like that. But we're going to add a little bit of heat stain to all those areas I did over the uh, sepia. And I'm just going to put a light blue tint over the old whole manifold just to give it a bit of look and a bit of interest. It's not just one monoblock color then. And there we go. Again, through the HPC Plus at about 18 PSI. And yeah, there we go. Repeat on both uh, exhausts. Now, headlights. Again, tricky to do, but not too bad at all. So there's a little locating point at the bottom. Push it in. Get it located in place and seated. I'm just showing my webcam there. Um, don't forget, I am streaming when these videos are being done as well, multitasking. So I found it easier to pop it in, hold it with your finger, and glue it from behind. That way it's nice and clean, and there's a proper glue joint rather than hoping you've got it inside. So we hit it with the Bob Smith's glue, get some kicker on a micro brush, and just lightly touch it to the CA glue, and it dries almost instantly. Repeat that for both sides, and then there's a grill in the intake at the front as well that we just glued in from behind. You can see there it's been pushed in. Again, we just glued it from behind like we did that light, and there's two lights to go inside as well. So there we go. Just careful of application of glue. Hit it with the kicker again. The actual headlight lenses, we're just going to very carefully add a couple of drops of Bob Smith's with our precision nozzles, and then making sure they're straight. Get the lenses in, just push them home and leave it for a bit. Now, my advice with the Bob Smiths, because it takes a little bit longer to dry, 
is put things in place, leave them a hell alone. Don't start looking around trying to clean things. The amount of times I've wiped things over with a cloth and dragged some uncured CA glue off and wiped it all over the body, I've lost count of. So if you're using this Bob Smith, especially doing what I'm doing now where I'm putting the front lenses on, I put a little blob of glue just on the front where it won't be seen, but just enough to grab these lenses. Do not start wiping this model over now because you'll grab uncured CA glue from out that joint and you'll wipe it everywhere. It'll get on the cloth and it'll end up all over the shop. If you're gluing things like this, glue them, put them to one side and leave them the hell alone while you do other things. So while that's drying, we've got all the pins to hold the uh, engine cover down and the boot lid down. They are plastic in the kit and chromed. Um, so the PE on this. So the PE part is glued in place. We've got the leather buckles there. We've painted them black and then scraped off the paint on the buckle part itself. And now we come out the body, and the body's quite tight, so it goes into the back, like so, and then lift each side gently, very gently, just to get past that interior, and it should literally click in place. There we go. How good does that engine look with that interior as well? It's absolutely fantastic. It really does. And then the front, you just got to get the front lip over the edge. Just you'll see it now. It's going to click any second. It's just there. It's behind that front wheel. It is. I'll see it in a second. There it is. That's it. Clicked in place. And just push the front in. Job done. Very positive fitting body on this, actually. It's been actually a really nice kit to work on. And there we go. I think the interior color really complements the blue myself. Our exhaust mounting points re glued for the second time. So there's a nice, generous point on the side that it clicks in first. And onto the manifold at the front we put an earlier on the engine. And then there's two locating points on the back that they clip onto as well. So with our CA glue holding it, they glue in perfectly. Make sure they're all straight as well. Same for the other side. And I'm liking the effect I got on the exhaust. I think it looks really good. Obviously all my cars are modelled as new. So I don't want to really rust the exhaust. But... I think it looks good. Again, two more of these leather straps out of PE. A little bit of Bob Smith's. Very, very gently popped in place. This stage of the building, I need to be really careful putting these last parts on. Because one little drop of a part with say glue on or slip or smudge can just ruin all your hard work. So be very, very confident what you're doing. Be very precise. Um... All these parts, the same as the back, we've got the little hinged uh, pins here that just clip on. They're all being glued to the bonnet itself. And that way I can take the bonnet off and I'll have them all snap off. That's the way I've done it. Uh, we've got the rear light clusters we've left in the kick chrome, the connection points at the bottom. So a little bit of Bob Smith, so we can just glue those in place. Again, be very precise in what you're doing. If you're not confident with CA glue, use a PVA base glue. Now the steering wheel step three is some hull red. So this is Tamiya. LP 18 and we're going to brush on just little streaks and lines and shapes and what we're trying to do is um, we're trying to replicate the wood grain on the steering wheel by adding random effects Joe taught me through this a while back we've used it on a car in the past I forget which one it was and we're going to do it today on this so we'll just add some random streaks of color on that the other step four is coming in a bit front screen needs to be masked off or I thought it did uh, for some chrome, but the chrome doesn't go all the way around. And looking at it, I thought, why well, am I going to mask all this off to spray it when I've got an Edin silver paint marker pen? Which these things are fantastic, they are absolutely brilliant. We can just go around the raised edge perfectly with this pen. You can get these on eBay, they are Edin paint pens. I think they're 720 or 780. Just make sure it's a paint marker pen. They are very, very precise. I love these pens. They're brilliant. And we can just get everywhere that needs that marker. Nice and simple and quick. Pop it to one side and let it dry. And you're good to go. Now, it isn't handleable. It's just like Molotov. But because we've got no surround around the top of the screen, we can hold it by there on this. So it's the only reason I've used it. And then once we're happy with that, a few strategic places of Bob Smith's. There's a nice big gully where the uh, windscreen sits, so it holds glue really well. And we just very carefully pop it in place, push it down gently for a second or two, let the glue grab a hold of it. 
Like I said, the downside to the Bob Smiths is it does take a while to get purchase. The PE window wiper I've already made up. I thought I'd made a mistake in uh, painting it black, but when I look at some of the cars, they are black. They generally are black. I thought it would be fully chrome. Um, so mine's kind of like a restore car. That, that's what my vision of the car is. So I painted it black and with some Bob Smiths and some careful positioning, we can get it glued in place. And then one of the final touches, the Ferrari badge. Again, one of the 3D badges I have. I think they're from MSN Creations I've got them from. They look absolutely fantastic, much better than decals. Now, the final stage of the steering wheel. We've got some Clam Tamiya Clear Orange, uh, which is X26, I believe it is. And we'll just paint it completely unthinned out the airbrush for now. And we're going to put a coat down, a couple of coats down, building it up. This is about the third or fourth coat now. And then on the very last stage, we're going to mist over it with pure Tamiya Lacquer Thin Retarder, and that will help it all settle. And that orange effect over the flesh and the um, whole red just makes the steering wheel look absolutely fantastic. Gloss finished. Looks just like wood. An absolutely brilliant tip from Joe. We've used it before, but I'm going to thank Joe again. I've done it a similar way before, dry brushing with the AK wood effect. Uh, but we're doing it this way. Now, the kit does actually come with PE key and uh, key fob. So that's inserted in the dash. And I'm just painting the key fob red. And uh, then a final wipe over with some UMP shine will give us our nice gloss finish. Now, this is a particularly tricky body to polish up. There's so many things to snag and ruin. And if you look in a minute, I do actually knock the window wiper off. So be very, very careful going around it. I think I already have knocked it off, to be honest. Um, but it's important to give it a buff. The spray shine from UMP is fantastic for this. It really is. Just look at that shine. This thing is stunning. It looks absolutely beautiful. The Pro Scale paints, I love our paints. I really do. I know it's easy for me to say they are my product, mine and Simon's products. But they're just t proving themselves time and time again. I've got so many nice models built with our paints that I just, this is what our paints do. I, I, you're seeing me using them in person. You're seeing the results I'm getting. And the results speak for themselves. It is phenomenal. The colours are breathtaking. The 2K is absolutely fantastic. Just look at that. Absolutely beautiful. Really is an absolutely stunning looking car. In a beautiful colour, with a beautiful 2K finish. That red interior just looks absolutely fantastic. I love that. The engine looks phenomenal. Again, against the blue of the body. Just looks truly stunning. It really is a nice little engine in this thing. It's really pretty. It really, really is. Um, and there we go with our Tonyu cover on. Nice look. Really like that. Our steering wheel looks great. How good does that steering wheel look? Doesn't it? Absolutely brilliant. Nice, simple way of doing it. And there we go. One final touch. Another one of these uh, Ferrari logos for the center of the steering wheel. We're going to pop that in place. And there we go. So a quick video of it on the turntable. We'll have a little bit of chat about it. This is just a random video I did. I thought I'd show it. Uh, it's not as clear as um, the overhead camera is because uh, it's done on my phone. Um, but what a great model. It really has been fantastic. Um, this was a very kind gift from my buddy Joe Liello, all the way from Canada, many moons ago. And it's a kit I've wanted to build for a long, long time. And it's an entry into the ISM Le Mans Group build, which is over on Facebook. And what a great kit it's been to build. Um, it's a beautiful car, a beautiful colour, a beautiful 2K. And I just love it. I think it looks absolutely fantastic. Um, it's just been a real nice, simple kit to build. And if you can find one, I highly recommend picking one up. So there's a little video. We've got some pictures now. Um, sits absolutely beautiful, this thing. It's such a stunning looking car. It really is. So this was primed in... Right, I've got to try and remember that. This was primed in Pro Scale Light Grey Primer. Several coats of Pro Scale Le Mans Ferrari. Ferrari Le Mans Blue. We sprayed the um, Pro Scale bright aluminium silver strip up the center after masking it. Kit decals went on perfectly. No problem whatsoever. Um, we've got the Pro Scale 2K Clear, which, as you can see, speaks for itself. Looks absolutely wonderful. Um, we've got Pro Scale Bordeaux Red Interior and on the Tonyu cover as well. The wheels are kick chrome. The windscreen's done with an Edin paint marker. 
Um, everything else is kit chrome on the on the model. The exhaust is done in engine manifold with some highlighting using other Arcolite colors. And the steering wheel done the Joe Camilleri way. And I just think it's great. It's a great looking car that really showcases, again, our pro scale products and what they are able to produce. And there we go. I am very, very happy with that build. She is absolutely stunning. As I said throughout the build, as an advert for our paints, these kits I'm doing lately are speaking volumes. The depth of colour of that blue is phenomenal. The depth of clarity of our 2K clear and the shine, absolutely amazing. Um, very, very happy with it. Um, and with the red contrasting interior and ton new cover, it looks great. It really does. Uh, a very, very nice final finish. As I said, the only thing I would have liked to got is the wheels from uh, Hobby Design, but alas, it is what it is. The kit ones look okay. Uh, the kit engine looks phenomenal. It's a really nice kit engine. I'm very, very impressed with that. And overall, the finish, more than happy with it. It's been a very enjoyable kit to build. Uh, the colour, I'm so happy I picked that colour. I stumbled across that by accident. and I'm so happy I did because it just looks great. It really suits the car. And with the shape of that thing, catches the light at nearly every angle. It just looks absolutely wonderful. It really, really does. Um, like I say, the kit engine, brilliant. Absolutely lovely. And the interior, while simplistic, I think it looks really good in that Bordeaux red. I think it just adds a nice visual pop to the blue. And uh, yeah, there we go. Also, a big thanks to Joe Yellow, the, uh, the kind, generous chap who sent me this a few years back, all the way from Canada with loads of other kits because he's crazy. Uh, there you go, Joe. I finally got it built. I just need to build some of the others now. Um, yes, well, thank you, buddy. Much appreciated. This kit is unbelievably hard to find over in the UK. And uh, I probably wouldn't have one if it wasn't for you, mate. So thank you very much, buddy. You're an absolute legend. And there we go. There's another one off the bench. What's next? Well, I did pick one. It's McLaren MP4 12 in the Red Bull scheme. I kind of want to do it, but I've been also mixing paints for Pro Scale today. And I mixed a colour called Chrysler Green with Envy. And it looks absolutely stunning. It looks beautiful. And I'm kind of wanting to do something muscle car-ish. Probably old school muscle car in that colour. But I really want to do something with a full library on it. We've not done anything with a full decal scheme since the Sierra, which was back in... Oh my God, I think it was like end of January, was it? It's a while back now. Um, so I think I do want to do something with a full decal scheme. This is going to be... The, the McLaren's got a lovely hobby uh, design decal set with it. Um, and it's a great kit. I've built it before. So, should we just crack on with it? Maybe. We'll see. Time will tell over the next couple of days. But there we are. That's it. We're all done. As always, thank you all to my wonderful patrons who support these videos and myself in being able to do this as my day-to-day -day job. You're all absolute legends. As I said in the previous video, going forward on the next build, I'm going to flash all your names on screen. And thank you all that way for your continued support. You're all absolute legends. I couldn't do this without you. So thank you all very, very much. And if anybody out there would like to become a supporter, there's a link to my patron in the description down below. You can click on it, look at all the applicable tiers. I think there's eight in total, starting at three pounds or whatever it is, four pounds. I forget now. Uh, working its way up. And every level gives you a different thing, uh, a different... Um, What's the word of reward, I suppose it is. Um, you get early access on all the videos. You get about a month's early access on the videos. You get exclusive video builds, which there will be one very soon coming up for patrons. There's an alpha model on the Civic build on there that only patrons have seen. There's a few videos on there only patrons have seen. Um, there's a few how-to guides as well, um, and paint reviews, things like that. Uh, you also get added to an exclusive uh, supporter Facebook page over on Facebook where all the links to the videos are shared. And a Facebook supporter chat group as well. There's about 60 of us in there. You can chat with all fellow supporters and modelers and myself as well. Literally a direct line to me. You can talk to me in there if you want. Um, and yeah, without your support, I couldn't do this. There's a buy me a coffee and a PayPal link if you want to make a one-off donation as well. And uh, I thank everybody for the support. Uh, across the board thank you all you're all legends there's also links down below to everything i sm related the form of facebook page pro scale painters down there you can come and buy our paints from us we post all around the world custom mix color cooks custom mix colors to order as well at no extra charge um so come over and support us there as well uh, we're a new company and as you can see our paints are wonderful and the results i'm getting 
are phenomenal. They really, really are. Uh, there's links to Ultimate Modern products there as well. There's links to all, everything myself related. The live show, the author hangout group, my scale meters there. There's an email address to get in touch with me. All the products I use are listed down there. It's endless down there. Go down below and have a look and you'll see all the links to everything. As always, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Click the bell notification and the thumbs up uh, to get notified of all these videos. Click the thumbs up and, of course, leave a comment as well. Love reading all your comments. Your uh, comments are what spur me along with the builds. And, uh, yeah, I thank you all for watching. I'm all over the shop today. It's been a manic day. I've just edited two videos. I've done all this. So I'm, yeah, I'm all over the shop. So, excuse me, my mind is going a million times an hour. All right. Enjoy the rest of the night, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.